hear us online. Double check yours, make sure it's not muted. I just did. It says it's recording, and then this one's not on mute either. Okay. I think Gary's trying to talk, but it's not. Not working. Yeah, that's Gary. Gary, can you hear? You guys here now? Yes. 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 But it's only through my computer. It doesn't say mute. It says it's going. Oh, very well. All right, we'll try. <coughs> Join me for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the flag of America, and the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, nation, nation under God. All right, item three, uh, agenda changes. None. None. Uh, public comments. We have no one uh, in person in attendance. Do we have any comments online? If you would just wait one moment, uh, he's, he's troubleshooting just some speaker issue and some uh, connection issue. public comments uh, we try to limit those to three minutes if you for the record could state your name and uh, where you're from yes of course my name is uh, and here's my public comment good evening school board members of Freebird. thank you for having me once again my name is Shine and I am here this evening to do a follow-up and change because the way things are now are not how they have to be consciously knowing that we have American brothers and sisters who are labeled different because of their height, we as people should no longer neglect the LPA's simple request for their respect and to be treated as equals. Yet, for whatever unnecessary reason, there seems to be an unhealthy pattern here in this world that people who are considered different are treated in an egregious way. And there is nothing noble about this. Freeburg school board members, with your display of using a caricature of a little person, you continue this unhealthy pattern, using a derogatory term that is offensive to a little person and maintained as offensive in the dictionary, you continue this unhealthy pattern. What is the point of continuing to do this? The LPA, Little People of America, have spoken against this, and you brazenly continue not to listen so let me be their witness and let me say this, caricatures are dehumanizing and malicious. Please retire this mascot in name and choose the pattern of honorable things. Again, my name is Charnay and I stand with the LPA people. This is wrong and I believe that you should take it down. 
Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. Thank you, Sharnae. Uh, are there any other public comments? Hearing none, we'll move on uh, to approve the consent agenda. Any motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Parrish. Second. Second by Mr. Gowd. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staff? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gowd? Aye. Very well, motion passes uh, for the consent agenda. Uh, item number six, committee report. Uh, we did have a building and grounds committee uh, meeting before this meeting today. Uh, we took a tour of the construction to look at the update, uh, where it is at. Um, I do have a, an item or more discussion in my superintendent's report on that. Very well. Uh, item number seven, student member report, Ms. Stein. Um, I didn't think I'd much talk about it. Item number eight, principal's report. Okay. I just have a few things also. Um, registration is still ongoing. We closed the online portal, but um, parents can still bring in registration information, um, residency, birth certificates, especially for the incoming freshmen. We've sent reminders, put notices in the paper, we'll continue to do so, but things just keep coming in and we're um, getting a good number of students in. Um, what's interesting this year is that we've already been contacted by 22 new kids as transfers. So not incoming, but people transferring to the district. I'm not sure if all of them will follow through because I think some of them maybe were in the house bidding, trying to get houses, um, but we have received at least um, confirmation from 17 of them. So I'm curious to see how many more we get. That's, that's a pretty good number for us this year. Um, and it's following up with what Carmen said, sports, extracurriculars, band, everything is going great. Um, it is amazing to see all these camps going on again. You just totally, we've missed it and you appreciate it. And uh, uh, volleyball's been going on this week and I know there's girls basketball next week and band coming up, but I mean, there's kindergarten kids coming to camp and these little kids are flying around the place excited. It is just such a wonderful feeling to see things back in order. So kudos to all of our coaches and all the players that are helping out with camps. We've got all kinds of students that have been helping out with boys basketball, cross country, you know, band, ball, everything. We just have so many student athletes that are just loving being back out here. So it's good to see. More to come. Very well, I'll, I'll just make a comment on that. I read in the Herald today, if you haven't seen it, uh, my thanks to the village uh, for recognizing the baseball team with an official uh, the baseball day. Uh, and they had, had the team in and presented them with a uh, certificate Softball girls get recognized for Excellent. their accomplishments as well. Yeah. All right. So I didn't see that. That, that but it'll be in uh, next week's uh, Tribune. Um, item number nine: Superintendent report. All right. Um, Kendra has been working hard making reservations. Uh, we have met, made reservations for uh, both the hotel and the train for the Triple I conference. Um, I'll send a itinerary out. Um, over the next uh, in the next few weeks, um, we've met with both District 70, uh, Freeburg Grade School District 70, and Smith and District uh, Elementary, and we are still going. To, we're going to do uh, our joint dinner with them probably on Saturday night. Um, so that's always uh, a nice event where we all get together and, and um, um, enjoy some fellowship. Um, of the return to school committee. Uh, Mrs. Jung and I uh, have met with the other superintendents 
Uh, Mr. Alt, Mrs. Jung, and I have sat through a couple different webinars with state and other superintendents. Uh, the governor uh, just released updated guidelines, I believe, yesterday or the day before. Um, so there is some action items uh, or an action item later in the, the board meeting that we'll talk about. Uh, the construction uh, first floor is, is coming close to being finished. Um, again, I'm, I'm very impressed with the work they've done. Um, the big items that remain or they need to hook up the HVAC to the first floor. Um, they need to put the ceiling tile in and the floor tile. Uh, once that, get, that gets in, then it's just a matter of some finishing touches and the, and the uh, first floor should be ready. Uh, we're anticipating that teachers will be able to come back into the, onto the first floor uh, to work on the rooms either the last week of uh, July or the first week of August. So we, should, we don't think that there's going to be an issue. Uh, second floor, their walls are starting to go up. I did post something on Facebook with some pictures of the interior walls. Uh, windows are going in. Mason should be done in the next day or two. Once they are done, then there is a brick siding um, that goes in between or above and below the windows and on the north side of the building. Uh, and then that will be completely wrapped up. Uh, so everything's moving forward and um, I'm pretty happy with that progress. Um, I did, I put in here something about legislative updates. I have not heard anything specific about new laws. There are a few laws that we're going to be keeping an eye on. Um, I have heard um, from the meeting that we sat in about um, the return to school guidelines that a lot of the mandates that were passed um, in the um, earlier sessions are now being relooked at because of some of the things that they are imposing on um, schools. Um, just. Unfunded, unfunded mandates, things like the extra Spanish, uh, the science, um, uh, a science uh, credit that has a lab. Uh, these are things that are probably burdensome for some of our population of students. So these are things that we're going to be looking at, and uh, our organizations are um, asking the legislation to make some adjustments to those. So I'll keep you up to date when those come through. Well, item number 10 open, this uh, A, consider changes to the return to school plan. Um, the governor um, sent out some updated legislation and it, it basically amounted to a few changes in wording. Um, and one of the, the biggest change is he, um, rec that, that the recommendation for anybody that's not vaccinated, uh, they're saying that they the old language was they should wear a mask and now it is recommended that they wear a mask. Um, so once that was out, um, there was a resolution that was passed around uh, the state and I have that resolution uh, in your folders and I will be asking the board to um, take action on that resolution here in a minute. But generally speaking, um, our plan is going to be, or at least the proposed plan, um, is going to be that um, students that are vaccinated, staff, uh, anybody that's vaccinated will, is not required to wear masks. Uh, those that have not been vaccinated, uh, it's gonna be recommended that they wear a mask. Um, we are uh, planning on leaving the responsibility uh, with the families and the students to, to, to follow that guidance. Uh, we are not going to go around and ask for student vaccination cards. Um, you know, if they walk through the building and they don't have a mask on, uh, we don't feel like we need to be the, uh, the mask or the vaccination police. We feel like that responsibility goes to the parents and the health department. So along with that, um, as far as if anybody's within close contact of somebody who's positive for um, the coronavirus, uh, if you are vaccinated, uh, there is no quarantine period, but you, if you are not vaccinated, um, then there is a quarantine period. So if that's the case, we will, be return, we will turn their names over to the health department and then rely on the health department to decide whether they are back, uh, have to be quarantined or not. Um, there's still uh, other precautions that we will take uh, throughout the school day. Uh, we will do our best to keep students uh, three feet apart if we can. Uh, there will be some instances where they will be within three feet. Uh, but we're going to do our best to keep them that far. There's going to be extra sanitation throughout the school. Um, those that 
uh, teachers or staff members that would like to continue using the plexiglass, they can do that as well. Uh, we'll keep uh, extra uh, masks in the office uh, for anybody that needs a mask. Um, and then the other piece is that uh, it is a requirement that uh, all, all people on uh, public transportation must wear a mask. So uh, again, we are going to rely on uh, students and families to police themselves on this. We will have masks available for anybody that needs a mask, but our bus drivers are not going to be chasing people down and forcing masks on people and they, when they get on the bus. Um, our school buses are considered public transportation? Yeah. So the, the resolution basically goes through and uh, follows all of those guidelines. Our resolution does follow uh, the current IDPH and the governor's guidance that he's put forward. This was one of my concerns that we would uh, pass any kind of resolution that would go against those. I think it puts our insurance company in jeopardy, but I believe uh, what this uh, uh, resolution states and how it states it, uh, we're in compliance with the, uh, the mandates from the governor and the IDPH. Um, probably would be worth our while to go ahead and read that. We're missing a page, aren't we, Andrew? What's the three pages? I've got page two and three. I have one, two, and three. I have one, three. I have one, two, and three. Yeah, you can, I have one. If you'll give it to me, I'll just go ahead. Sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, the resolution says, whereas the Board of Education of Freeburg Community High School District 77, counties of St. Clair and Washington, uh, state of Illinois, the board, has the responsibility to manage and operate the schools of said Freeburg Community High School District 77, the district, and whereas the Illinois School Board, our school code 105, Illinois School Code 5 slash 10 dash 20 and 5 slash 10 dash 20.5 has amended the code, authorizes the board to exercise all powers required for the maintenance, operation, and development of the school, uh, district schools and adopt and enforce all necessary rules for the management and government of the district schools and Whereas on July 9, 2021, the Illinois State Board of Education, the ISBE, and the Illinois Department of Public Health, the IDPH, fully adopted the July 9, 2021 CDC guidance for the 2021-2022 school year guidance. And whereas the guidance allows for local school control and discretion in determining appropriate and necessary COVID mitigation measures for the 2021-2022 school year, in consultation with local public health department. Whereas the board acknowledges and appreciates the decision to allow local elected school boards in consultation with local public health departments, discretion to determine COVID-19 mitigation measures. Now, therefore, it is hereby resolved by the Board of Education of Freeburg Community High School District 77, counties of St. Clair and Washington, Illinois, as follows. The preamble uh, recitals of all this resolution are adopted and incorporated herein by this reference and found to be true and accurate statement. Section two, local school boards do not have to require fully vaccinated individuals to wear a mask in school buildings, but may at its discretion require vaccination, vaccinated individuals to wear a mask. Section three, local school boards should recommend unvaccinated individuals to wear a mask in school buildings. Section four, local school boards must emphasize and consider imp implementing at its discretion in consultation with local public health departments, layered prevention strategies, and to protect students and staff that are not fully vaccinated. Section five, local school boards must monitor community COVID-19 transmission and vaccination rates to guide its local decisions on layered prevention strategies during the school year, i.e. strengthening or loosening of certain mitigation procedures. Section six, Local school boards must monitor CDC and IDPH guidance changes on prevention strategies on the school year's progress, as the school year progresses. Section seven, the board hereby adopts the ISBE, IDPH, and CDC guidance and authorizes the superintendent to develop and implement COVID-19 mitigation measures, including decisions on the use of face coverings and social distancing practices in consultation with local public health departments based on local ge geographical and student and staff COVID-19 vaccination and transmission data. 
this resolution shall take effect upon its passage. So if anybody had any questions on that. Will we have to change this once the governor changes whatever? If, if the governor would come in and, and change the mandate, then this says that it's up to me to handle that appropriately. And, and obviously, if there's going to be any changes, I would consult you guys and kind of get a consensus where you guys stand. Any other questions on the resolution? Seeing none, um, I need a motion uh, to pass the resolution for the governor's uh, move. Motion by Mr. Gallup. Seconded by Mrs. May. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mr. Gow? Aye. Motion passes. We went to signatures and stuff afterwards. Yeah. Um, on that. Um, item. We've moved into item 11, new business. That was uh, passing the resolution. Uh, item B is consider increasing the sub pay rate. Just real quick, uh, jumping back to item A. Item A is, is no longer uh, needed because actually the governor took the action that we were asking him to take from the resolution, so. Oh, very yeah. good. Just give an explanation. Uh, item B then, consider increasing the sub pay rate. Um, our, our subs make $80 a day to sub for us. Um, that $80 has been there for, I couldn't even tell you how long, probably close to eight to 10 years. Um, several districts around us um, have increased their sub rate. I think the grade school, I talked to Mr. Jansen, he said they were 95 this year, they're gonna go up to 105 next year. Um, as we've talked about in the past, uh, the difficulty of getting subs um, it's, it's gotten worse and worse over the years, and districts are offering, uh, you know, more to try to attract subs. So one of the um, recommendations I'm making is that we increase our sub rate from $80 to $100. Um, in our discussion, uh, Mr. Haas and I had, um, some of the school districts also uh, will offer a little extra to their, their retired teachers. Uh, to bring them in because first off they're unknown. Uh, we kind of know uh, exactly what um, you know quality of person they are uh, that worked here for a long time. So um, one of the districts that I talked to, they actually offer $130 a day to their retired teachers. Um, we then would you know if that whatever we set it at, we would reach out to our retired teachers and let them know that we were offering them a little bit more uh, than we would offer. A regular sub. Any questions on that or comments? Um, my in my conversation with uh, Mr. Brick and uh, on on those retired teachers, I thought it was uh, important to keep that connection uh, with them, get them back uh, in the school. So I, I myself am in favor of paying an additional uh, amount, what that amount is, whether it's $20 or $30. Uh, um, I'd, I'd like other board members uh, uh, thoughts on, on that, but uh, uh, I think we would get a better uh, sub if we could bring back our retired teachers. But what I will I will tell you one of the issues that we're actually running into now is we have a maternity leave, and um, you know w when you have a maternity leave you're looking at possibly um, you know being gone six to eight weeks. Um, if we hire a sub, then all that happens in the classroom is usually the mater the person that's on maternity leave develops the lessons, hands out, and they just hand out worksheets and hand out you know here's your writing uh, assignment. If we could bring in somebody, first off, that has a background in teaching, but then also has an investment in the school, um, I think we're just gonna get a lot more out of that person. Uh, trying to find 
somebody who's qualified just to teach is, uh, is, is difficult. Typically what we get is, is people that come in that have retired from another job and they're just subbing because they have the credentials to sub, but they're not necessarily um, trained as a teacher. Is there a lot of retiring interested in them? Uh, you know what, we, I, I haven't reached out, uh, but we could. But it's worth the effort. We have had in the past. We, we have years, and it's been a few years we've had, had in the past. We haven't had a, a lot of retirees in the last couple of years. But um, Mr. Haas came down and helped out after he retired. And I know Karen Fellows used to sub a little bit. So, but. I know at the grade school there's a lot. Do you get a lot of recent graduates who want to get put in the door at sub? Does that happen anymore? Last year we probably had one or two um, regulars that sub, and, and we do a lot of internal subbing, and contractually it's a lot more expensive to do an internal sub. Um, not that teachers don't like that extra money, but they also like to have their conference break and do their work. And so it's just, uh, to be able to have somebody come in and sub and, and then allow teachers to have the time to do the job that we want them to do, you know, this is probably one of the better things Well, I think if, uh, I mean, getting qualified subs and uh, good quality subs it, it have become very competitive between the schools. And if you've got a school 70 yards away that is is offering $25 more a day than what ours is in other school districts, uh, uh, people are naturally going to go to them first. And, and so I don't know what else. There's two parts of this uh, discussion. One, raising our base pay but then also reaching out to our retirees, trying to entice them to come back and, uh, and sub for us and whether or not we would want to uh, entice them with an additional payment over, over and above our, uh, our base sub pay. So, um, that's, that's the discussion. I talked to um, it was $130 and they're not in our immediate district but they're close by so I think $125 $130 either one of those I would say I, I mean I would like to bring it up the regular sub pay to $100 and then do $125 for the retired I mean, the retired teachers. And you're looking at retired teachers who only worked here? Yeah. Any other comments? I, I'm in agreement with you, Mrs. Morgan. Uh, I think those are good figures. Uh, um, well, do, do we have a recommended motion on the, uh, on the sub pay rate? I would, I would to take the pay up for regular subs to $100 and retired SCHS teachers up to $125. All right, we have a motion uh, for a pay rate. I'll second that. Seconded by Mrs. Staub, uh, the motion was by Mrs. Morgan. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mrs. Nail? Aye. Mr. Henning? Abstain. Motion passes. Uh, item C, consider the first reading and recommended change to board policy uh, um, 110, 120, 130, 210, 220, 255, 260, 7220, 7230, 7280, and 890. Um, all of these um, should be in your board packet on, on that. Uh, are there any particular issues that are important to discuss? 
Um, no, this this the reason there's so many is we had a, a press issue come out. That's uh, a quarterly um, publication that comes out from press. Uh, Mary Rose, our attorney, is actually on the advisory committee on this, and so uh, they go through. Uh, quite a few of these are on because of a five-year review. We have to go through and review the policy. Even if there aren't changes, we have to review them. I did include in the uh, packet that was sent to you uh, kind of a summary of what was changed. Um, so I don't really think there's anything in here that uh, really stands out um, specifically, but um, if anybody read through it and had any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer and do that I can. No questions. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the first reading? I, would, I will say this is the first reading. So if you go through between now and then, and there's issues, we can make the adjustment to the second reading. So move. Uh, motion by Mr. Parrish. Second. Second by Mr. Dow. Mr. Haas. Aye. Mrs. Staub. Aye. Mrs. Nail. Aye. Mr. Henning. Aye. Mr. Parrish. Aye. Mrs. Morgan. Aye. Mr. Gow? Aye. Sure. Well, uh, motion passes to approve the first reading of, of those policy changes. Uh, item D, consider changes to the ATI contract. Um, ATI has approached Coach Lar with the idea of, uh, of looking at increasing the amount of time that our athletic trainer is with us. Um, it, over the last two full years, um, we spent about $12,500 for athletic training services. That included uh, weekly checks. It included about 10 to 15 hours, 12 to 15 hours a week. Um, it covered uh, all varsity events and then all three levels of football and away football games. Um, what the proposal is, is to bring on a full-time trainer. Uh, full-time meaning they would work up to 40 hours a week. Uh, they would cover all all levels of home games, still travel with varsity football, and they would also be available for practices during the week in addition to practice events on Saturday. So uh, adding quite a few um, events covering all of our activities. Uh, we actually, and I know in the past we've had a couple kids injured at uh, underclass, and typically what happens is the coach tries to manage that and then the parents come and takes them to the hospital um, to, to figure out what's going on. This way we'd have a trainer there, uh, this would be a, a dedicated person to Freeburg High School. Uh, last year, we kind of jumped back and forth between several trainers. Um, you know, one I think worked out well, the other one was just a little bit different. And so um, this is something that I, I think would be a good idea. Uh, what we're looking at is a cost of $24,000 a year. Um, I did include a, a contract for two years without an increase. Um, so they're going from 15 or 12 to 15 hours at, at 12,500 to more than double that, and they're less than doubling the rate. So I think overall, uh, price-wise, it's a good price. Um, I think it also benefits uh, all of our uh, sports uh, to have that person around, the same person around, a lot of continuity. Um, and I think as we grow, Jill said we're going to, you know probably have 50 to however many new kids next year and, and cross country has 70 kids and football has 60 or 70 kids. So uh, the more that we can have a, a constant person, uh, some continuity, I think it, it will benefit us. Are there any questions or discussion on that? Yeah, is anybody tracking the hours on this? On or on? Oh, no, we do. We do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because we basically get billed by the hour. Okay. Yeah, and it works out. Okay. Sorry, didn't we get, wasn't Brett used to be full-time? No. No. Oh, he wasn't full-time? No. no. Brett worked uh, somewhere between 12 and 15 hours, and if you worked more than that, we got billed at, I think it was $29 an hour. We've, we've never, oh, we've wow. never had a full-time. Now, he was, okay. he was here a lot. <laughs> Like he was here like yeah, he was I mean, but it, you know, Brett, Brett's a special person and a good golfer. Yeah. If anybody wants to pass that along, but uh, oh. yeah, he. Uh, nope. We had this is a contract where we had um, twelve to fifteen hours at twenty nine, and it worked out that we uh, 
paid about twelve thousand five hundred a year. Okay, so would they? Where would that money come from? So it, it comes from the the uh, activity fund. I'm sorry, the uh, education fund. Okay. So I think it would be very beneficial for us to have it for our support. You know, because it takes a while to do those athlete tests, especially during like football season and when cross country and volleyball, you know, and then having them there all the time, it makes a huge difference. It, I mean, it would make a huge difference. Ms. Neal? Um, would ATI or would the school get to decide if we're we'll have input? We'll have input. Okay. We'll have input. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're not a good but do we just get whoever they send us or do y'all get to the Matt and you and Ms. Young get to decide, talk to who they give us? Yeah, we'll, we'll have input. We'll have input of who they have. Yeah. Okay. I would encourage you to have some type of uh, review process or something that, like you said, so you, I'm certain they're going to send us a, a high quality individual, but sometimes personalities don't get it. Uh, any other comments on, uh, on it? It is uh, roughly double. The cost to the school, uh, my personal opinion is that they provide a vital uh, uh, service to our kids. Uh, if you've ever been to undergrad uh, soccer games, for instance, and not seen uh, you know, freshman uh, basketball, freshman, uh, any, any undergrad uh, sports, the injuries or potential is, is there just as it is in the varsity. So it would be nice to have coverage. Any other comments? Um, is there anyone that would like to make a motion concerning the ATI contract for a full-time uh, athletic trainer? So moved. Uh, motion by Mr. Parrish. Second. Second by Mrs. Uh, second by Mrs. Stop. session or do we have a reason to go we do have a reason for personnel and then possible re real estate transactions very well motion, motion by mr barish to go in closed session Second. seconded by mr gal mr haas aye mrs Stout. aye mrs nail aye mr henning aye mr parish aye mrs morgan yes aye mr gal aye very well motion passes uh, we're now in closed session. Thank you for attending.